Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome back to The Savage Nation. This is Michael live with you today. I know many of you just breathed a sigh of relief, saying my life is not worth living when Michael Savage is off. However, we must take a vacation every once in a while on The Savage Nation. And right now my voice is gone because I was screaming up until five seconds ago. Because although all day long I was connected and ready to go, the systems completely failed two minutes before the show. And I wasn't going to have a show. But apparently right now I do have a show. And the phone number is 855-407-282. This is the Savage Nation. The best headline of the day is on the front of the New York Post. And they're pro-Hillary. That's the funny part. We know that Murdoch can't get enough of the Clintons. And yet Murdoch's reg, the New York Post, has an anti-Hillary headline, quid pro do. Bill cashed in when Hill was in O's cabinet. Big bucks from foreign interests. Bill Clinton raked in $48 million for speeches while Hillary was Secretary of State. While she used her clout in, 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 to help foreign donors, donors to the Family Foundation, a new book says. It's as corrupt as it gets. We're no better than the, the most rotten banana republic. And what do we have on the other side of the aisle? There's your answer. Let's see. We have Barack Bush. We have Barack Hussein Bush ready to rake in the dough. We have the construct, Rubio, invented by a group of billionaire donors in Florida, a creation, a total creation. Rubio is as about ready to be the president as my dog is. He has about as much qualification to be president as Teddy is to be president. He sounds like a juvenile that they picked off the street. And I'm supposed to sit here and chant, Rubio, 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 they found some clown with O at the end of his name, and suddenly he's a president? This is the country we have. We got what we deserve because you were asleep. Not me. Don't blame me. I'm not asleep. You are. Are you willing to vote in a rhino like Barack Bush for president to stop Hillary? Another Bush? By the way, this just came to me in the Savage Nation. You can join the program by calling one 855 that's if the phone lines are working. I can never tell anymore what's working. No one's telling me. It's like flying a plane without any instrumentation running the Savage Nation. 855-400-SAVAGE. It's unprotected talk. 20 things I trust more than Barack Obama. One, Mexican tap water. Are you listening? Someone sent this to me. 20 things I trust more than Barack Obama. One, Mexican tap water. Two, a porcupine with a pet me sign. Bill Clinton with my teenage daughter. Passing gas while fighting the flu. An elevator ride with Ray Rice. Taking pills or a drink offered by Bill Cosby. A Hillary Clinton war story reported by Brian Williams. Gas station sushi. This is 20 things I trust more than Barack Obama. Gas station sushi. Jimmy Carter with the economy. A Palestinian on a motorcycle. Pete Carroll coaching decisions. Eating an apple from an orchard at Fukushima reactor number four. Hitching a ride from a guy in a goalie, goalie mask. The ingredients in a hot dog. Nancy Pelosi's grip on reality. Jerry Sandusky as a, as a Boy Scout. <laughs> oh, God. So here's Barack Obama, the most corrupt, vicious liar in the history of the American presidency, now pushing the big lie of global warming to rob us even further. Listen to this fraud in clip one. Wednesday is Earth Day. A day to appreciate and protect this precious planet we call home. And oh, today please. there's no greater threat. And stop to flying our around in Air Force One! Change. 2014 was the planet's warmest year on record. 14, well, you and your wife used the plane so much. On record have all fallen in the first 15 years of this century. Let me explain something about Earth Day, which I'll talk a lot more about tomorrow. I know an awful lot about it. It was created by a man in prison right now for murdering his girlfriend, Holly Maddox. Earth Day was a creation of one of the greatest con men of his period, Ira Einhorn. He killed his girlfriend, Holly Maddox. He stuffed her in a trunk, hid her in his closet, and fled to Europe where he was protected by American liberals for nearly 15 years, I believe. And it was owing to one 
fabulous district attorney in Philadelphia who would not give up on bringing this guy, Ira Einhorn, back to justice, that he was finally brought back from France, tried and found guilty of murder. That's who created Earth Day. He has about as much validity as Al Sharpton does in reorganizing the American police force. So that's the con man in the White House, a day to appreciate and protect this precious planet. Then he flies off on Air Force One to go c collect money, bags of money. It's unbelievable to me. How do you people put up with it? Any other country, this wouldn't be going on. So you say, look, the headline says, quid pro do. Bill cashed in when Hill was in O's cabinet. Big bucks came from foreign interests. Do you think it's limited to Hillary Clinton? Have you no idea how the system works? Do you think that Rubio, do you think that Cruz, do you think that Bush are not going to make a fortune on the campaign finances that you're going to send them and that they're going to collect? Are you that stupid to think that they're clean on the other side of the aisle? You really must be stupid. The system is corrupt. It's dirty from top to bottom. The finance system is why we have what we have at the highest uh, uh, office right now, what we're liable to get unless there is campaign finance reform tomorrow. 20 things I trust more than Barack Obama. One is Mexican tap water. That's kind of funny. Now he's selling us global warming. And I'm playing Carry On My White Wayward Son by a group called Kansas. Again, I invite you to call 855-400-7282. guy one minute before the show is flying at 45,000 feet ready to go and everything collapsed and failed all the instruments went down there was no connection to the home studio in Dallas and the plane fell I would say within 5,000 feet of the earth and we had to pull it back up from the earth so here I am let's take our first caller out of San Francisco on line 5 KSFO what's on what's on your mind today hi my name is Pete I'm from uh Port St. Lucie, Florida, listen on the internet. I'd like to give you the reasons why I wouldn't vote for Jeb Bush. In my mind, he's a murderer. Because you go back a little bit and you hear about the Terry Schiavo. And wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Let's stop with the murderer part. Let's stick to what we know rather than what you don't really know. I wouldn't vote for Bush because he's part of a dynasty. And I don't live in England in the 1800s. So I agree with you there. And I call him Barack Bush for a good reason. How do Bush's policies differ from Barack Obama? Can anyone explain that? I don't, actually. He's in favor of illegal aliens being granted amnesty. So where's the difference between him and, and the Democrats? I'd like to know the answer. Oh, I don't know. I don't even know why he's being invited to the Bilderberg meeting in uh, 20, well, later on this year, I guess, 2015 or 2016. All right, but you're not a, I take it you're not a fan of the Bush family. Not at all, no. And Jeb Bush will give us more of the same. Exactly, exactly. I, I, I but, really... You know, look, when you look at the front page of the today's New York Post, quid pro do, Bill cashed in when Hill was in O's cabinet. This is, this is so corrupt. It's something that in any other country there would be not an investigation but an immediate arrest. Do you know that? I understand that, sure. But because the Republican Party is just as dirty, there will be no investigation. Because the, the, the whole political system is corrupt in this country now. There really is no good choice to vote for. Every, you know, the, the top runners want to leave the borders wide open. They want the, uh, they want the uh, North American Union. I, I think that's one of the reasons they leave the, the, the borders open. And they just ram it down our throats. And why does Barack Obama, why does he have the audacity to push Earth Day and global warming? Why? What, what is he out to do with, with the global warming lie? What is he out to do? I think he's... Uh, uh, out to sign us on with the uh, UN treaties. Yeah, the UN asked for $100 billion last week to help against global warming. You know where most of that money will go? Into cocaine and hookers. Exactly. Like the I said, $100 billion will go to most of the hookers in New York and, then, and the coke trail coming up from wherever it comes from. Are they kidding me? Give $100 billion to those gangsters at the UN? Sure. They have to, we have to fund their high life. You know, we have to fund All right. Well, I, you can see I'm a real fan of the United Nations. Jeb Bush, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, and Marco Rubio. Who's left then? People say, well, okay, Savage, I got it. Who are you going to vote for? You know what the answer is? You want to hear my answer? I have an answer. And I'll give it to you the minute I return. But the phone number is 855 savage I do have someone I would back. There's only one Republican candidate who I think is electable because he's less dirty than the rest of them. 
and I trust him. But it's not Marco Rubio, the invention. He's an embarrassment. Marco Rubio is an embarrassment. How can anyone get excited about a man who is so obviously invented as Marco Rubio? Marco, remember the movie Being There with Peter Sellers way back when? It was about a humble gardener that some uh, a party found. A gardener. And they said, we're going to make you president. And he was like a dummy. And he said, I don't want to be president. They thought, that's exactly why we want you to be president. Because then once you're president, we can do whatever we want with the country. And the movie was called Being There. A humble gardener was made president. Rubio is like, that's why I've called him the ice cream man. Do you understand that? He has about as much integrity as Marie Harf at the State Department. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Did foreign entities receive any special treatment for making any kind of donations to the foundation or your husband? Well, we're back into the political season, and therefore we will be subjected to all kinds of distraction and attacks, uh, and uh, I'm ready for that. I know that that comes, unfortunately, with the territory. It is, um, I think, worth noting that uh, the Republicans seem to be uh, talking only about me. I don't know what they'd talk about if I weren't in the race, uh, but I am in the race, and uh, hopefully we'll get onto the issues, and I look forward to that. Well, that's the number one issue. How much money did you rake in? What, what are you talking about? You'll get back to it. What are we Republicans are talking about? You, you stink to high heaven. The country is talking about how rotten your family is. New York Post says it. Bill Clinton's earnings from paid speeches in 01, 9.4 million. By 2009, it was 7.5 million. Went down. 2010, when his wife was Secretary of State, 10 million. 2011, 13 million. 2012, 17 million. Hillbillies, megabucks, it says. Hillary Rotten Clinton used her clout as Secretary of Hate to do favors for foreign donors who gave millions to her family foundation and who paid millions more to her husband, Bill, in speaking fees and new book charges. This is the book by Peter Schweitzer says that Bill Clinton raked in nearly half of the $105 million he was paid for speeches over a 12-year period during the four years that his corrupt wife, Hillary Clinton, served as Secretary of State. So now, where you think the missing emails have something to do with this? The book is called Clinton Cash, and they raise questions about shady foreign money flowing into the Clinton Foundation and what actions Hillary took in her official capacity in exchange for the cash. It's an amazing allegation. Schweitzer is a former speechwriter, consultant for, for George Bush, to be clear about this. But let me tell you something. I don't care if he was God himself. He could be sued for libel if he couldn't support his allegations. God would be sued for libel if he wrote a book like this and couldn't support his allegations. One example of the alleged quid pro quo cited by the New York Times and other sources involved the State Department backing a free trade agreement with Colombia that benefited a company founded by a big donor to the Clinton Foundation. Okay, there's more, much more to it than this. This family is tied to foreign donors. Of the 13 Clinton speeches that fetched $500,000 or more, only two occurred during the years his wife was not Secretary of State. Ladies and gentlemen, don't you think we deserve better than a system that, that, that would permit the American flag to be bought and sold like a cheap rag? I think it does. Even ABC News asked her about it. And she gave the old, aw, oh, shucks, they're picking on a poor little woman again. Just picking on a poor little woman again. But that leaves us with a question. Would you vote for a rhino like Barack Bush to stop Hillary? I won't. I will never vote for a Bush. Eight years was enough. The first father was good. The second one was a dunce. The second one was El Dunso. The first one I, I had respect for. The second one didn't know where he was. He was like here and there. I didn't know what state he was in half the time. Never mind the state of mind. Only conservative talk shows who were invited to the, to the White House liked him. No, I wouldn't vote for another Bush. We had eight years of them. We know what to expect. Let's see, where would the war be this time? 
Let's see. They gave us one in Iraq. Mm, they gave us one in Afghanistan. What country has not yet been bombed by a Bush? So if Jeb Bush became president, eh, I would say they could go after taking uh, taking it out on Bangla, uh, Pakistan or Bangladesh. They might bomb Bangladesh and send troops to Bangladesh and tell us it's in our national interest to keep uh, the Bangladeshis out of New York City. That, uh, you know, there's another 9-11. It's sickening. Just sickening. So you say, well, who are you going to vote for? It's simple. I mean, I, I'm not going to mince words. I would go for uh, Walker. I like Scott Walker. I think he's the only one who is relatively clean and could win. Not only because he's clean, he's also a good organizer. He's believable. So he has a little charisma problem. So what? I need a con man who's very charismatic like Obama? I don't need charis charisma. I need a little honesty. So as far as I am concerned, I'm a, uh, at this point, I would go for Scott Walker. We haven't heard much by him or for him yet, but I would back him. I won't back the others, by the way. I will not back Rubio, a fraud. He should withdraw now while the going is good. Let's take some calls on the Savage Nation. Let's go to New York City, WABC. Go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Yeah, hey there. Good, good afternoon. I'm with you on Walker. Okay, two questions we need to ask Hillary. First question is how much money, what percentage of the money you take in from your charity actually goes to help people? And then when we find out it's a ridiculously low number, we ask her the second question, do you plan to run the country the way you run your charity? No, all right. So in other words, you know that it's a rotten system that permits a woman like that and her husband to cash in on the on the game. But you realize she's selling she was selling influence according to this book. And he was collecting the money out of the back door. You get it? Of course you get it. You're not stupid. Carry on my wayward audience. This is the Savage Nation. Remember my big novel, Countdown to Mecca, is coming out in only two weeks. I'll tell you more about it when I return right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. They're going to be mind-boggling, and I think people are going to read this book, and they're going to say, my goodness, this is happening in America. How can this happen in America? And it's detail after detail after detail. Can we trust someone to be the President of the United States who's involved with so much money changing hands from foreign countries, foreign entities? No, Rand Paul is right about that. And the new book says that they cashed in real good. Did you know that Bill Clinton is believed to be the richest living ex-president and one of the ten wealthiest ever? You say, well, that's not a crime. No, not really a crime. But when you're using your wife's office to enrich your family, that is something different, is it not? And how was that done? According to the book, there were lucrative development contracts awarded to foundation donors following the devastating Haitian earthquake in 2010. Now, you know that Barack Obama and Ram Emanuel said never let a crisis go to waste. But it's not limited to them. Well, there was the Haitian earthquake. Boy, was was money made off that one. How much money do you think was made off Katrina? How much money was made off the Iraq war? How much money is being made off the Afghanistan war? How much money is being made off the ginned up war with Russia over Ukraine? It's all about money. There's such corruption. And you say, well, does it make sense? How much money do you think is being made on the illegal aliens coming across the border? Tens of billions of dollars a month are being made by front groups for churches and private organizations that are receiving billions of dollars in federal money. Billions of dollars is being raked off on the illegal alien. This report says that Hillary's brother, Tony Rotten, sat on the board of a small North Carolina mining company that in 2012 got one of only two coveted gold exploitation permits from the government of Haiti, the first issued in more than 50 years, according to the website Breitbart. Bill Clinton himself was paid a million dollars by a Canadian bank and a major shareholder in the Keystone XL pipeline as the State Department was considering the project, according to the author Schweitzer. I don't know what else to say to you other than we have the government we deserve. There's nothing else I can say to you. I think that that says it all. She is disqualified now. She should withdraw. But the woman has no shame. She won't withdraw. But she is vulnerable to another Democrat, by the way. And that 
in a way, is a little worrisome because they may be worse than her. I mean, you could say, well, she's corrupt, but she's, let's say, a, a known corrupt entity. Who would you rather have if it was her or Elizabeth Focahontas? Warren. Would you rather have Hillary or Focahontas, the, the left-wing fanatic? They're both left-wing fanatics. Which one is more fanatical is the question. And which one is more corrupt? That's the only question. Well, on the right side, who do we have? We discount Rubio, a non-entity, not qualified at any speed. We have uh, people with good ideas like Rand Paul and uh, whatever his name is, Cruz, but they're not electable. And then we have Scott Walker, who has good ideas and is electable. That's why I back Walker at this time. I don't know what you think about it, but I find it a little boring to talk about 2016. But it's hitting us right in the face. It's hitting us right in the face. We have to talk about these things, don't we? Right? WABC, line one, go ahead, please. What's on your mind? Hi, I want to talk about the difference between what Hillary and Bill have been doing and everybody else. The answer is there's no difference. They make money as it goes. Everybody else does what they want in anticipation of the payoff and the, after they retire to their presidential library. It's all the same. Well, you're not you're wrong, actually, because something you don't know about the political system, and it's not your fault, it's been hidden from the public. Let's say a candidate raises $100 million to run for the presidency, even though he knows he can't win. How much of that money do you think goes to family and friends through all sorts of shell companies? You tell me. <laughs> well... You'll be shocked to find out that a goodly percentage of it is put right into the pockets of family and friends, which is why people who are running right now know they can't win, but they're doing it for the rake-off. Do you know that? I believe In it. In other words, there are people in this campaign right now who, A, don't want to run, and B, know they can't win. But the money is so big that their family and friends are going to make by setting up fake shell companies, a media company, a print company, uh, a mailing company, a consultant there is so many hundreds of millions of dollars that they're able to steal, and perfectly legally that they're running for office even though they know they can't win. I don't think people understand how rotten the system is. And if they did know it, there's liable to be a revolution in the country. Running to Thank, you. Thank you for the call. WSBA Radio, line four, you're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? I just want to tell you that my generation is dumb enough to put Hillary Clinton in office. They, they pay attention too much to Facebook and their Twitter accounts that they don't pay attention to what's going on in the real world. And yeah, but I think that a story like this about her steering contracts as a result of her husband getting money while she's in the State Department, which is big news in a tabloid like the New York Post, this cannot be kept off Twitter and Facebook. It's impossible for even the average drug-addicted, sex-addicted girl to, to ignore it. Right, and also it, it kind of it's, it's a shame, but, you know, you know, SNL can make fun of her, but, you know, my generation would just think it's funny and just vote for her because... No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think even the, the sex addicts and the drug addicts in your generation will understand that she stinks to high heaven. I hope you're right, because I, I do not want to see another Clinton in office, nor another Bush in office. Well, neither do I. I think, I think we, are, uh, uh, we are in a desperate state. Not one of the candidates, by the way, has told us about the tsunami called ISIS, killing Christians at will invading swaths of land the size of Great Britain and doing nothing about it. What have they said they would do to stop them? Why are we bringing Muslims into the country? Why are we bringing any, any Muslims into America, especially Muslims from nations that have a high degree of terrorism? Why has that not been a topic being discussed by anyone? What sane nation on earth permits this to go on? Answer, a corrupt nation. A corrupt nation permits this to go on. You say, well, what's corruption? You're looking at it straight in the eye. That's corruption. Let's go to Washington, D.C., WMAL. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Line number two, you're on the Savage Nation. The line here, KKOH in Reno. Line nine, you're on the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Yeah, just to follow up on the, you know, the bipartisan corruption in Washington, I think it got an easy fix. Let's put it to the American voters. Make it mandatory that we have an audit rotation in Washington, every three years we go through, we do the books, we audit all candidates. So they're not, we're not chasing our tail to find out where the money flow is going, right? We're proactive, we're up front. Make the American voters put it into vote and make it mandatory to audit. Put, wait, wait, put, put what into a vote? 
to, to put mandatory audit in place in Washington. So any of these candidates... That but did through, you hear what I said? Uh, let, let's say a candidate raises $100 million. How much of it gets raked off to their friends and family? Did you hear that part of the show? Yeah, I did hear that, but that's exactly where we would catch all of this. You've got all these shell companies... You, you can track the money flow. You can find out who's paying off who in Washington. All right, but since both sides of the aisle are doing it, how likely is it that you're going to see such legislation demanding such truth in, in, uh, in, in fundraising? The answer is zero. No, I don't agree. I think if it's put to the American voters, they don't tolerate it anymore. Both sides. Wait, how are they going to put it to the American voter? By what method? Just, just as we do the normal, the normal topics that come up. Put it on. No, no, you're not answering the question. What do you mean, put to the American voter? In what form? What do you mean, as a vote? Voting on what? Yeah, you vote on on making it mandatory, just like you do. But for on, you're not answering the question. What do you mean, you vote? When do you vote, and how? Where? You vote states. You vote. You vote at election time, just like you. You're talking do. about a ballot initiative that's run in all 50 states. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's so cumbersome. It's never going to happen. WMAL in Washington, D.C., line number four. Go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Line four. I don't know what we're having with WMAL. Line four. We'll try again for the for the 50th time. Okay. No line four. All right. 50, 51. This is Dean. Uh, Mike, I think uh, Hillary, even though she smells worse than the worst sewer, she's entitled in her mind to be president because of everything she's been through since Attorney General. She had she latched onto his coat tails and she's put up with you know what and she's entitled to it so it doesn't matter what she's done what do you mean it doesn't matter what she's done she has to run for, for office people have to vote for her yeah how many people if you see a headline quid pro do bill cashed in when hill was in o's cabinet big bucks came from foreign interest even the most stupid liberal can see how this stinks yes but i think that those that vote decide nothing and those that count the votes decide everything Oh, now you're going back. Now you're going back to the primary adage of Joseph Stalin, who says it doesn't matter who votes; it matters who counts the votes. Is there now? And of course, we know that who counts the votes are companies owned by George Soros. One of them is in Spain, so it's possible that there is no need for elections anymore in America. But I don't think she's going to win. My personal gut feeling is this scandal coming out with this book is so great it's going to override all of her entitlement. Isn't elections the, the ultimate reality show? I don't know what they are. I don't think they're. No, they're not the ultimate reality show. Unless there's a uh, a butt implant on the candidate, I would say no. Smoke and mirrors? And all no, no. That. Unless one of the candidates, if we reach the point in America where a female candidate turns her derriere to the cameras and says, look at my butt implant, then I'll know it's time to leave the country. But I don't think we're too far away from that. Do you? No, I don't. And that's what's and you know last night I was in a restaurant here in southern Florida. I saw one for the first time in my life i I couldn't believe it. I was with a few people. I said, the woman looks like I, I don't mean this is not a sex statement. I had never actually seen it. Remember, I grew up in another age where this was never a, never done this kind of surgery. It's true. I went to the uh, freak show at the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus, and it was always one of my favorite places to visit. It's not that I laughed at the Poor people who were born with various anomalies, the microcephalics, the macrocephalics, the one-breasted man, you, you name it. Because I always liked oddities in life. And I saw a woman last night in a restaurant in southern Florida who looked like she was out of Ringling Brothers. It looked like the doctor had put, I'm trying to be very pleasant about it without being sexist or being a, a, a vulgar. It looks as though a doctor put breast implants on her behind. And she was marching around with pride, like she was the queen of the May. I couldn't believe what I was looking at. This woman belonged in a mental hospital. But there she was at the bar ordering a drink, hugging and kissing their, this and that. And she thought she was gorgeous. This is what we're having now in America. So if you have women who are this idiotic in this vein, and we have candidates now who are not two, three steps behind them, in vanity, I would say we're not too far removed from the day when one of our candidates, and it could be a man yet, who shows up and shows the uh, the implant and says, vote for me because I had the best butt implant of all. 
That's how far we've fallen. I know you'll be probably laughing and saying that's really funny, but it's not really funny. Now you have the con man in the White House pushing Earth Day, which I have to get back to. The climate threat now is a greater threat than radical Islam. Last I checked, the climate didn't cut the throats of Christians in Libya. But there's someone tell that to Nancy Pelosi. Listen to clip number four on the Savage Nation. So climate change can no longer be denied or ignored. Why not? The world is looking to the United States, to us, to lead. And that's what we're doing. We're using more clean energy than ever before. Okay, let's stop America. right there. So Earth Day is coming up tomorrow. It was created by Ira Einhorn, at least he said he created it. Ira Einhorn created this fraud called Earth Day in 1970. This is the same Ira Einhorn who named himself the Unicorn, by the way. He murdered his girlfriend, Holly Maddox, stuffed her in a trunk, and put the trunk away in a closet. Then he fled to Europe and was on the run for 26 years. This is who we're quoting now on Earth Day? This is who Obama is now revering? The man who created this fraud? No, he's creating, he's talking about not Frankenstein, but Frankenstein's invention called Earth Day. 855-400-7282. Countdown to Mecca by Michael Savage. It's a pretty good book. I think you're going to love it. Michael Savage is a New York Times bestseller. What do you mean is a New York Times bestseller? That's what they say about, no, it's a best-selling author. Who wrote this press release? What do you mean I'm a New York Times bestseller? How could a person be a New York Times bestseller? Michael Savage is a New York Times bestseller? Who's writing this ad copy? His latest tour de force novel, Countdown to Mecca, is a gripping page turner, which takes readers on the journey of Jack Hatfield, a discredited journalist, who may be the only one who can stop an impending third world war. Plane bound for Amman, Jordan goes down in the Caspian Sea. The crash yields no survivors save the Russian mercenary who hijacked the flight. And a cast containing an agent of unprecedented destructive potential is missing from the wreckage. Well, that's interesting. The real plot is this. A hooker overhears a word spoken by American generals who are plotting to bomb Mecca. And then they try to kill her. That's where the story begins. It's exciting. It's set in San Francisco, but the book is not written for anyone who lives in San Francisco. They're not allowed to read it. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I will work with anybody. I've done that. I did it as senator. I will do it again. But I will also stand my ground when we need to. And part of that is getting unaccountable money out of politics because we cannot afford that, even if it takes a constitutional amendment. Isn't this funny? She's talking about getting unaccountable money out of politics while even the Hillary-friendly New York Post's headline, quid pro do, Bill cashed in when Hill was in O's cabinet, and big bucks came in from foreign interests. He raked in $48 million for speeches while his wife was Secretary of State. And what do you think they gave him the money for because he's such a compelling speaker? They say because she used her clout to help foreign donors get what they wanted out of American policy. It doesn't get any dirtier than this. It's a shock, but not unexpected. And I suspect this could bring her down. I don't think she can ride this one out. I think it's just starting. And I think that another Democrat will likely step forward who is cleaner than Hillary Clinton. That's what I think is about to happen. I only hope the same thing happens on the Republican side. We need better than Jeb Obama Bush. I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Bye. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. 
Did foreign entities receive any special treatment for making any kind of donations to the foundation or your husband? Well, we're back into the political season, and therefore we will be subjected to all kinds of distraction and attacks, uh, and uh, I'm ready for that. I know that that comes, unfortunately, with the territory. It is, um, I think, worth noting that uh, the Republicans seem to be uh, talking only about me. Uh, I don't know what they talk about if I weren't in the race. Uh, but I am in the race, and uh, hopefully we'll get onto the issues, and I look forward to that. They were all on the issue. The issue was about the money, the, the, the gout you right there with your husband. Why don't you get onto the issues? The whole country's talking about the money that you and your husband s took down. The country smells the stink. The rot coming out of Arkansas has reached us again. The awful coming out of the outhouse. We thought it was gone. Here it is again. New York Post, quid pro dough. Bill cashed in when Hill was in O's cabinet. Big bucks came from foreign interests. It's a huge book. It's going to be a bestseller. Big mega bucks tied to foreign donors, says the book. God himself couldn't have made these allegations if they weren't backed up with the facts without getting sued into the poorhouse. Now, there's another story. Here's the other story. You got U.S. warships. Apparently, they're running next to uh, Iranian warships. Allegedly, the Iranian warships are bringing weapons to the Houthis in Yemen, right? Well, which side are we on? I thought Iran is our ally against ISIS in Iraq, but what, they're our enemy in Yemen? They're our, they're our ally in Iraq, but they're our enemy in Yemen? Who is in charge of this country? Which clown is in charge of the Joint Chiefs of Staff? Which clown is in charge of the government? One hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing. So let's see. Let's follow this again. There's a show of force of our Navy trailing or blocking the Iranian Navy, which is a bunch of rust buckets, by the way, leftover garbage that some other third world hellholes sold them, some Navy. They could sink the entire Navy by pressing one button. One carrier could press one button and there'd be no Iranian Navy. It would disappear. But there's a big show of force. I say, here's the U.S. Navy is here, and the Iranian rust buckets are there. And we're being told that the great Obama, the uh, admiral-in-chief, is protecting us in Yemen from preventing the Iranian Navy from bringing weapons to the Houthi rebels. Okay, then why is Iran our ally in Iraq against ISIS? Can anyone explain that to me? If you can, you win a Nobel Prize, because no one else can explain it to me. Here's another little story. Arab TV commentators claim Obama supports Iran because his father was a Shiite. Did you hear this one? Commentators on two different Arabic television programs claim that President B B Barack Obama is pushing a nuclear deal with Iran because his father, Barack Obama Sr., was a Shiite Muslim, and President Obama apparently wants the Shia-run government of Iran to be victorious in the region. Commentators made their remarks on the UK channel Al Hiwa TV on March 25 and on Four Shabab TV in Saudi Arabia on April 10. Syrian writer Mutin Lazik Elnani and Hiwa said, There is one thing we must not forget. I am not peddling some theory, and I am not being racist. But Barack Hussein Obama is the son of a Shiite Kenyan father. He spent much of his childhood in Mombasa, South Kenya, said Lazikani. I visited this very area, and I can tell you that it is mostly Shiite. All the childhood memories of the man who rules the White House are Shiite memories. He goes on. This is why the Iranian issue is so important to him and why he is so anxious for Iran to emerge victorious and for Syria and all the countries of the Arab Gulf to be shattered, sell, said the Arab commentator Lazi Khani. Did you know that President Obama's father was born in Ngoma Kogelo, which is the southwest region of Kenya? But his own father, what do you mean his father? He had two fathers. I guess that's why Hillary wrote the book, uh, Johnny has two fathers. His own father had converted from Christianity to Islam and whatever. Who knows? It's too complicated. But the, the, the Sunni commentators are saying because he's a Shia, he's trying to destroy the, Shia, uh, the Sunnis. And that's the whole story. They also claim that America created ISIS. The Americans believe they could fight the Sunnis. They call it terrorism, but this is not what they care about. They want to destroy the entire ideology. Shiite expansion is the best method to achieve this. And the Shiites are ready because they have an ideology to that effect. 
So America has used them. He said, if I were in America's place, I would use them too. Stanley Ann Dunham married Barack Hussein Obama Sr. on March 2nd, 1961. Their son, Barack Hussein Obama, was born on August 4, 1961. His parents divorced in 1964. Ann Dunham then married in 1965 Lolo Suetro, a Muslim from Indonesia. President Obama's biological father died in a car accident in Kenya on November 24, 1982. His stepfather, Sotoro, died from liver failure in 87. He was apparently an alki. Now, what's wrong about this article, and I, I'll get over it quickly because this goes back to the old conspiracy theories. The headline is, Arab TV commentators claim Obama supports Iran because his father was a Shiite. What the article is missing is that Obama's biological father was really not around during his formative years. Remember, they divorced in 1964 when our president was around three years old. So why would you assume that the father would have great influence on the son when he wasn't even around? Kid was three years old. He hadn't even lived with his father since he was a month old. So I'm not so sure that this is a correct picture of what influences our president in his dealings with Iran. What do I think? What are his decisions on Iran based on? Valerie Jarrett and her Iranian connections. That is the real story. And that's what's missing from this headline. And now you've heard the rest of the story on the Savage Nation. Quid pro do, 855 Barack Bush, everything is up for grabs. The phone number again is 855-400-SAVAGE. Let's go to FTL in Fort Lauderdale, Florida on line six. Go ahead, please. What's on your mind? Yes, I want to mention something about uh, Jeb Bush uh, that um, many of your listeners may not know since they don't live in Florida. When Jeb was governor, he weakened the hurricane provisions of the South Florida Building Code. Now, as you know, hurricanes are a serious problem down here in South Florida. Why did Jeb weaken the provisions of the South Florida Building Code? Because he got a donation from the Latin American Builders Association, and they wanted the code weakened. Why? Because it would cost them money if the code was strengthened. They already had homes under construction that they had contracts on, they had homes that they had contracts on yet to be built, and if the enforced stronger hurricane provisions passed, they would lose money because... If I, I don't doubt anything that you're saying. I get it. So what are you arguing, that he's as corrupt as Hillary? I'm arguing, yes, that, that, that this is something that uh, is not well known, at least out of the state of Florida. Well, let's start with this. I'm not a fan of Jeb Bush, but I don't think he's as dirty as the Clintons, by the way. Well, I, I'll tell you, uh, I think if you look into it, um, you know, he did other things, little things that don't help. For instance, he said that uh, motorcycles... Yeah, you're a life... Look, let's be clear. You're a lifetime Democrat. I recognize your voice. You're an attorney. Both perfectly fine. It's a free country. I mean, but you should come with a warning label. You're trying to run Jeb Bush down, which is okay. I don't like Jeb Bush. I think another eight years of a Bush administration would be eight years too much, too many. But the thing is, is I don't know that you're trying to, you're trying to compare apples with oranges. You know, passing bills to change zoning laws for construction codes is one thing. Using your position as Secretary of State to influence federal policy for foreign donors is quite another. If, if uh, well, if it's the case, there is, you know, like I say, you know, you can talk about the $300,000 speaking engagement fees that Hillary gets, but that pales in comparison to the $2 million that President Reagan got two days after leaving office when he... Yeah, but, wait, but Reagan's not running for office. As the last I checked, he's six feet under. Yes, that's true. But, you know, you want well, to... So, what, again, you're comparing now apples with pears. Well, not quite. I'm comparing. Let me, let me ask you, as a lifetime Democrat, do you really feel good about a woman like Hillary Clinton running for office with this kind of dirt around her? I'll tell you why. As you said, they all may be corrupt. They all may be in it for some. So what would she bring America that we need? Tell me what she would bring to America that we need. In my opinion, a government that seeks to help people. Not a government that seeks to... Are you kidding me? Hillary Clinton's going to bring a government that helps people? While they cashed in from foreign interest, they're going to help the average person? Look at our governor, Rick Scott, for example, again, a Republican, 
who refuses to expand Medicaid to 850,000 Floridians who are working, but are... I don't blame him. Who's going to pay for it? You? You know, I got to tell you, uh, you know, maybe you have... Well, now, now suddenly I got to laugh out of you. Who's, who's supposed to pay for all of this benevolence? This is the one thing I love about you liberals. You want to help everybody, but on someone else's expense. Who is supposed to support all these people? I'm telling you, I think it's worthwhile to support them by the taxpayers paying money. you got to have a very cold... Wait, you mean we should pay more taxes in Florida? We don't pay enough taxes? Sir, to help the 850,000 people... Why, why, why are they entitled to more money? Tell me why. Because, you know... It's a great society like Lyndon Johnson proposed. What do you mean it's a great society? We're bankrupt. The guy is printing money. We're not living here with, a, with an excess of money. You're not making any sense now. You know, you know, you're talking as though it's suddenly 1960 and it's Pax Americana and we have money rolling out of our pockets. Obama has bankrupted America by printing money and spending more than we're taking in. How can you say we should support everyone on earth? Bush bank. Uh, w Again, Bush. But Bush is not running for office. Hillary is. But let's let's. The age of the the age of big liberalism is long over. We can't afford it. You know, I got to tell you, if we taxed the people who ought to be taxed, we could afford it. Why is you mean like you mean like yourself? Sure. Why is the... how, how how much do you pay in federal taxes percentage wise? Well, you know, I don't know the amount. I, I... Oh, you don't know. Suddenly, suddenly you don't know. A man who knows everything doesn't know what he pays in taxes. So give me the percentage rather than the dollar amount. And the percentage, I would guesstimate that we're probably talking, roughly speaking, uh, maybe about 10 percent, a little bit more. That's what you pay? That's what you pay? Yes, sir. How do you get away with that? Well, what... Where the federal tax code calls for 39 percent, how are you paying 10? Because I have business deductions. I'm taking the gross... In other words, so you're, so you're running a shyster operation. Sir, now you're, you're, you're kiting money, you're hiding money, and you're telling me I should pay for the bums coming in from all over the world. I'm paying 39%. Why is that? Well, maybe you don't have the deductions that I do. Maybe I'm not as smart as you are as a liberal. Is that it? Because you know how to run the game? It's not that. Okay. Maybe I pay retail and you pay wholesale. Um, it, it's so you're as smart as Warren Buffett. So I have an idea for you. Why don't you just pay 39% of your income instead of 10%? And then you don't have to tell the rest of us what to pay. I gotta tell you something, okay? Why don't you write a check for the 29% that you're not paying and say, I'm gonna show by example that I wanna help the poor. Please donate this money to a Haitian who just came here on a, on a balsa raft. Thank you for the call. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. All right, so Hillary ignored questions from reporters about the bribery allegations. Plain and simple, bribery. There's a big difference between changing a law and this and that and, and doing favors, you know, lobbying. That, that's how politics works. That's what gives you your money. They give them the money to get what they want. But bribery is another thing. Bill Clinton's earnings, uh, based upon her tenure as Secretary of State, as alleged by this new book, tied to foreign donors that's bribery that's what it comes down to and then we have the ice cream man marco rubio who should, who should quit from the race right now he was never qualified he's a nobody in my day they used to be known as a non-entity this is a kid who if i were a teacher in college i can tell you right now i would have to i'd have to mentor him and coach him to get him through a class in a spanish interview rubio says it's important not to cancel obama's executive am amnesty you hear this during a recent interview conducted in Spanish this week with Univision's uh, host, he reversed himself from criticism he offered not too long ago. So in other words, Rubio was a phony through and through. That's why I called him the ice cream man. But, you know, at some level, that's not, that doesn't rise to the level of bribery. It's a little different. Jerry on WABC, welcome to the Sabbath Nation. What's on your mind? This whole thing with politics in the United States, it is monarchical. Okay, just go back to the second president, Adams, his son, president, boom, Harrison, his grandson, president, all the way down the line. Lincoln's son was even involved with politics and shady business with the railroads when he was an attorney in New York. Then you get to the 20th century. Wait, 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 slow down. But we had eight years of Bush, didn't we, Bush one? 
Yeah, we had Bush one. You didn't have Bush. No, Bush one. And we had uh, four years of Bush one and eight years of Bush two. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, we had twelve years of Bush. Do we need another eight? That's what I'm saying. We don't. Wait. Need it. We had eight years of Bill Clinton. Do we need another eight years now of Hillary Clinton? What I'm saying is, we got to put the brakes on this. Okay, we overthrew a monarchy over two hundred something years ago, and now all of a sudden it's getting worse and worse and worse. It used to be every twenty, thirty, forty years. We had a relative who became president. Yeah, all their kids became senators, congressmen, governors. Look at here in New York. You got the Cuomos, Kennedys in Massachusetts. But as far as the presidency goes, no, 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 no. All of a sudden, we're starting to get them backed up like a bad toilet. My friend, there is a tsunami about to engulf the entire world called ISIS, a radical Islam. Have any of these esteemed candidates on either side of the aisle discussed the tsunami? They don't care. That's right. They don't care. Has one Republican said, when I am president, I will squash them like a bug? I will take them out onto the third generation so they never threaten the world again? And here is how I will take them out. Here is how I will stop them. Which Republican has said that? You're 100% right, but then we got to jump across. We will not tolerate them killing Christians and Azidis and Jews. We will not tolerate it. The minute I'm president, we smash them. We're going to smash them with the anvil of American military power. They will not survive. We're going to take them down. Tell me which president has said that. None of them, but no one in the world has done that. Look at Europe. They haven't done crap. They haven't done Why? Crap. Why? Well, Jordan is fighting them. Egypt is fighting them. Obama's not fighting them. Why not? Well, we know why Obama's not fighting them. But why is the American, why are the American people so ignorant with regard to this tsunami that is literally hovering over our heads? called radical Islam and why are we bringing in a hundred thousand Muslims a year into this country how many of them have been vetted for terrorism ties answer zero zero don't tell me that we have a clean system join the savage nation call now 855-400 savage 855-400-7282 savage it's people who uh, skim the taxes, pay little tax. They use every trick, the triple Irish. They tell you to pay more taxes. Now, that caller, I actually like him. He's a liberal Democrat. He's an intelligent man. I've recognized him from a few calls before. But he admitted he pays only 10% in federal tax. He thinks he doesn't even pay that. He doesn't know because he has every every uh, deduction known to mankind. But he sits there saying we should pay more and take care of the, everyone on earth. And that's the tip, that's the mentality of too many people in America, like Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett says that he, his secretary pays more money than he does, in, you know, percentage-wise. That's because he pays as little as he can. Now, no one is stopping Warren Buffett from paying more. Warren Buffett's paying on dividend income. He pays 15% instead of 39 And he gets up and tells you to pay your fair share. Warren Buffett ought to pay his fair share while he's at it. Warren Buffett ought to stop blocking the Keystone XL pipeline. Uh, and the reason he does that is not because he's an environmentalist. It's because his railway cars and the big railroad he owns carries the oil from the Alberta tar sands to our refineries. And it's much cheaper to run it down the pipeline. So, you know, everything is you got to look at what it is. And the, why do you think people read newspapers and go on the Internet and listen to talk radio? You're looking for some insights and perspective. You may not come out disagree. You may not come out thinking differently about who you're going to vote for, or you may. And that's one of the reasons people are hanging on to so many of my words is because they know one thing they're going to get from me is an analysis rather than just a parrot. A parrot, I am not. An analyst, I am. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, I believe in helping people. I saw a show the other day. On, I'd rather help animals, by the way, than people, even though I'm giving out $100,000 in scholarships. And I'm going to read some of them to you. I got a few in that are so good, they're unbelievable. In fact, I'll read one in a minute. Some of the winners, they'll be announced, uh, well, the, the contest ended, we'll announce it July 4th, but some of them are so well written, it'll give you hope that there's a whole generation of intelligent people out there who are 20 years old who know what's going on or 18 years old. Don't think that they're all pot smoking drug addicts or that they're all sex maniacs and have nothing to do with their lives. Some of them know just what's going on. It's beautiful to read these things. The other night I watched a TV show late at night about the uh, Nacho, about the uh, short-nosed monkeys of, uh, I don't know, some high peaks in China. 
And it was astounding. First of all, I'm an animal lover. I've been my whole life. I've always had great sympathy for animals, as you know. I'm not looking to burnish my halo, and I've given... I've given significant money to elephant rescue groups, and it's it's heartbreaking to see the killers killing these elephants, and they just seized millions of dollars in tusks in Thailand. Think of the animals suffering, and the babies running away, scared as their mothers, machine gunned to death by helicopters in, in, in these African hellholes. The government military are using helicopters, gunships, to shoot elephant herds, and the corrupt whoremongers in the U.N. could... But those rats in the United Nations, those worthless UN rats, they don't stop the elephant trade. How many of them are making money on drugs and elephant tusks? How many of them? Anyway, don't get me started on that. So I saw a show on the short nosed monkeys of China. I was astounded to watch this thing. A whole herd of these things live up there above the alpine zone, and it shows them shivering almost to death in the winter as the snow falls on them. They huddle together and they eat almost nothing. And then it shows in early spring as the, the first early bird buds come up, they start nibbling on the buds and you see them coming back to life and how they survive on next to starvation. And you, all you want to do is, is reach out and save them. But wait, here's the, here's the point of the story. Their habitat has been slowly eroded by humans living up in those mountains in China who have built farms. They have, they primarily, you know, eat, eat uh, the trees. Then they show, uh, at the same area, they show another similar area of uh, the beautiful pandas. The pandas' habitat has been eroded or denuded by Chinese uh, a Chinese, Chinese population moving into the mountains and cutting down the, the uh, bamboo and building gardens, you know, to live on the vegetables. Listen to what China's doing. Evil China has relocated entire communities of human beings to restore bamboo habitat. Do you li are you listening to this? So the pandas are coming back, and they showed these individuals moving the pandas into their, you know, sanctuary. And the strangest thing was is that they wear a panda costume as they carry the panda in some kind of uh, litter up the mountain into the new habitat to not scare the panda. They actually put on a costume that makes them look like, look like a panda. And then they release the mother panda and her baby into the wild, and you see them reunite in a few hours. They get together, and they will survive and all i wanted to do was find a way to help the pandas up there in, in china and help the the short nosed monkeys i gave up on humanity i couldn't stand humanity anymore i didn't care about humanity i wanted to turn from humanity and then they showed some drawings from 1890 a buddhist monk living in the mountains was the first to notice the short nosed monkeys of this area and he sketched them they had never been seen before no one ever heard of them but this solitary human being this isolated man, this monk, saw them, and he studied them his whole life, and he reported on them in the 1890s. And it led me to understand a few things that I've known my whole life. A, the idealists keep the world going, the artists keep the world dreaming, and the philosophers keep the world thinking. And I invented that just for you on the spur of the moment, on the fly, right here on the Savage Nation. So don't spit on the idealists. Don't laugh at the artists. And don't put down the philosophers because they're not Republican enough for you. Do me a favor. Open up your mind. Don't run around like an oaf and think that that's going to save the world. Don't run around saying that all of the monkeys can die and the elephants can die and all you care about is a hamburger. I don't want to hear it anymore. I hear it too much from the idiots on the so-called conservative side. It makes me sick. Now let's go back to the idiocy of our own country. 855 407 Detroit, WJR. Mike, what's on your mind today? Hello, sir. Thank you for taking the call. I have to respectfully disagree with your supposition of how these facts are going to affect most of our country, uh, most of the willful idiots that are happy if the drive through line is short, the Internet's fast, and the uh, Starbucks is hot. Uh, I just think next time Bruce Jenner texts and gets in a wreck and that makes big Kardashian news, we all forget about this and... Um, we move wait, on. You, wait, you're saying that they're going to forget about Hillary's dough, the, the bribery scandal? Uh, forget about it or it never having hit their radar to begin with, I think. So uh, you mean the, the, the bribery scandal as alleged today about Bill and Hillary cashing in on her cabinet position will go away when they look at the behind of a woman who has no talent? You and I won't forget it, but, but 
thoroughly. I, I believe that the nation in mass will be distracted and uh, it will fade away. And I, I hate it, um, but I don't think it can have the intended effect on an audience that's unwilling to hear it and be. be All right. So who, who do you? What do you want to? You want to blame someone for it? You want to blame the media for it? You want to blame Hollywood? You want to blame the news? You're right to do so. It's 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 all mindlessness. But has it been any different in your lifetime, really? I don't think so. I think it's uh, I think it's a general apathy when things are good enough, uh, and our own little shell, our own little aura is not pierced by the corruption, and we feel rather powerless to combat it. I think it. you're right. You know, there was an adage that in my day, organized crime, which ran the cities, the big cities in the east used to steal one out of three municipal dollars through contracts and grants. It was well known they stole about 30% of the money of the tax base. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Do you know what the percentage is today in cities like San Francisco? They're stealing seven out of five dollars. They're printing the money. In other words, it's one thing for crime to steal a third of the money. It's another thing for them to steal eight, eight, eight out of the six. In other words, they're printing the money they're stealing now. They're so corrupt and so greedy. In other words, there's an end to it all. When does it all come down? In other words, the criminals stole one out of three municipal dollars with contracts, grants, rid bigging, uh, yeah, big rid, bid rigging. They took about 30% of the money they stole out of a city. But they weren't so greedy that they destroyed the city. The greed level is so great right now because of the corruption in Congress that they're stealing six out of four dollars. They're printing the money they're not stealing. That's how corrupt this government has become, according to people who've told me they know what's going on. And I think eventually this comes to an end. Actually, fiscally, we're no better off than Greece. And, and Greece is the domino that if Greece falls, by the way, it could tear down the entire EU and tear down the entire world banking system. Do you know that? The lazy Greeks want the whole world to keep paying them their pensions and their trips. I love that one. They're living on everyone else's money in Europe. The Greeks have been living off the Germans' money. The Germans are industrious and work hard, and the Greeks sit around doing nothing. So the country is about to collapse. So what do they do? They elect a demagogue like Obama, a demagogue like de Blasio, who promises them, I won't cut pensions, I won't cut benefits, I won't cut, pu I won't cut public sector jobs, because I'm a man of the people. He's an overt communist like Obama and like the, like de Blasio. They don't call themselves communists here. Here they call themselves progressives. But the communists are demagogues, and they say, you know what? I'm not cutting a dime of the pensions. So Greece is saying, go to hell to Europe. We're not paying you. And what do you think is going to happen? If Europe makes them default on the debt, tell me who loses. Well, everyone loses because they're going to leave the EU. They're going to go back to the Greek currency, the drachma. It could collapse the entire value of the euro. And so Europe is shaking in their boots right now because their weak sister Greece is liable to bring the entire system down, to, down, uh, down in a crashing heap. And what's interesting to me is that Western civilization began with Greece and it's liable to end with Greece. Just an interesting little observation how demagoguery works. And now I want to read something to you. One of the kids who competed for the $100,000 in prizes of the Michael Savage uh, Scholarship Fund. It's been quite a very demanding thing reading these essays. And I have a f one person really doing it. And I get some of them, then we're going to judge them. I'm going to read you. It's 500 words. I don't know who wrote this. Remember who you're listening to now. This is not a, a, a I got know, 20 years old, 18, I don't know. Listen to this. It'll give you hope. Here's what he or she wrote. Caught in an age riddled with constant distraction and political vexation, the American populace has begun to forget what magnificent opportunities its country nurtures. For centuries, the United States has been a safe haven for countless souls seeking a better life and still remains a solid foundation for those in pursuit of their aspirations. Despite being comprised of a variety of different peoples, the American Republic has retained an intangible unity and adversity. Perhaps credit is due rather to the American citizen himself, whose very nature ultimately determines his nation's success. That is to say, an American can be summarized as a vociferous individual unwavering in principle, a modest exemplar with innate ambition and selflessness, and the champion of our cultural heritage and its distinctive qualities. Yet there has never been a greater need for fearless orators and rhetoricians in our time. There has never been a greater necessity for those willing to defend concrete American freedoms. In public school, I encountered numerous history teachers bent on expressing their personal revulsion for America. 
<clears throat> with a haughty grin, one of them would lecture to such an intimidating extent that even the most gregarious students seemed taciturn. After weeks of having witnessed the indoctrination of the liberal ideology, resistance was imperative. So without warning one day, I questioned a radical claim the instructor made, and I refuted his argument. Ultimately, my teacher was unable to isolate me, since at every opportunity I, I upheld my convictions. Thus, I discovered the potency of a steadfast delivery and the futility of being a passive bystander in America. You understand a, a, a college student wrote this for my scholarship contest? There's one more page, and I'm going to read it to you. Analogously, part of living in an individualistic society is possessing initiative in one's labor. Work ethic and discipline are integral in this country, both economically and ethically. And he goes on, or she goes on, and it says, all of this derives from a, from a moral Judeo-Christian foundation. Even still, America's unmistakable virtues are a mere portion of its appeal. Nowhere else in the world has an unprecedented quantity of people flocked purely in search of a fair, just, and unrestricted life. Prior to World War I, aliens had to conform to American culture to succeed, which in turn had maintained its fundamental characteristics. Nowadays, to a certain degree, the converse is true. Therefore, proudly professing our heritage and being unafraid to express our language and creed is critical in preserving the traditional American way of life. Overall, the American patriot is the thread that entwines vigilance, resilience, and wisdom, which would otherwise untether. Though conditions may seem unfavorable for our country at this point in time, we must have unrelenting faith. Above all else, there has never been such great promise as with the people of the United States. For once in the world, a nation does not define its... Uh, let me re <laughs> For once in the world, a nation does not define its inhabitants, ingrained with integrity, benevolence, purpose, strength, and sacred liberty. We Americans define our nation. Is that amazing? That's written by a college student, no doubt someone who needs money, who has entered the Michael Savage Scholarship Fund to be one of the prize winners. Have hope. They're all not crazy and bad. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It may take a constitutional amendment to once and for say no uh, unaccountable uh, corporate billionaire money flowing into our political system we need to get back to one person, one vote, and try to figure out how best to manage that uh, in uh, the future. How could she get away with that? You say, well, how could you do with a straight face? Because she's a skilled liar. That's a given. But the headlines are the opposite. This is a woman talking about billionaire money when she lives off billionaire money. Headline, New York Post, quid pro do. Bill cashed in when Hill was O's cabinet, in O's cabinet. Big bucks came for foreign interests. Bill Clinton raked in $48 million in speeches while his wife was Secretary of State. Listen to this. While she used her clout to help foreign donors to the Family Foundation, a book says. How in the world can this woman run for office when she of all of them stinks to high heaven? In other words, you know that there's corruption in the system. You know they're all raking off money. I told you that. Did you know? You take any candidate, I don't care who it is, Republican or Democrat, they're all feathering their own nest every last one of them even if they they know they can't win they're running because their family and friends are going to become millionaires off the fundraising do you understand that do you understand how the system is set up and rigged well i'll tell you more about it as the week goes on there none of them are above any of this be be clear on that don't assume that the guys on the republican side wear the white hats please Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Now it's not enough just to tread water. We need to get ahead and stay ahead. And people need to feel that... Work is being rewarded. 
that the deck is not stacked in favor of those at the top, that they too have a chance to go as far as their hard work and their aspiration will take them. Hillary has hit, the, hit a record low. She's at the lowest point in her entire political career. If even the pro-Hillary New York Post is running a headline showing her and her husband throwing dollars in the air with the headline quid pro dough, showing the kind of big dollars they made from foreign interests through influence peddling, how can this woman get up in the morning and give speeches like this, knocking hedge fund manager pay, did you hear that one? Listen to the next one in clip 20. Listen to this. Just listen. Listen to I do this. everything I can to support goods and real services and take a hard look at what is now being done in the trading world, you know, which is just trading for the sake of trading. And, you know, it's just wrong that, you know, a hedge fund you know. manager pays a lower tax rate than a, a nurse or a trucker or an assembly worker here at Whitney Brothers. Why doesn't she pay taxes on the money that their foundation is getting if they're so concerned about not enough taxes coming in? I mean, they're getting big bucks from foreign interests, according to this book, and it's all tax-free. It's all tax-free, so pay money on it, that's all, and you can pay for the immigrants, and that's it. Of the 13 Clinton speeches that fetched 500000 or more, only two occurred during the years his wife was not Secretary of State. Hillbilly's mega bucks tied to foreign donors, says a new book. The power couple's combined net worth is 100 to $200 million. The, the richest living ex-president and one of the 10 wealthiest ever. It doesn't bother you? It should. The hypocrisy is what should bother you. It's not that she's rich and that they steered money to each other. Look into Dianne Feinstein. You may find things that are interesting as well. That's all. I'm not saying she did anything wrong. I'm sure it's all perfectly legal. They wrote the law, so I'm sure it's legal. In other words, if you're a senator, you write the law, so whatever you do is legal. That's how it works. Then you never get caught. Then they tell you that they're for the poor. Okay, whatever. That's the game. So here we go. We're rolling in, the, in like a, uh, pigs in the sty. 855-407-282 is the open line to Michael Savage on Unprotected Talk this Tuesday already. Tuesday. If it's Tuesday, it must be Belgium. Only I'm not in Belgium. I'm not eating chocolate. No, I'm not in Belgium. I'm sitting here in a rainstorm is where I am. Let's go to WABC in New York City. Jeff, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage. Wait, I almost hit the wrong button. I have to put my glasses on. Jeff, welcome to the Savage <laughs> Nation. Go ahead, please. No, gone. I love it. I'm getting like a blank job. This is a, a day that will live in infamy. I blew my voice out screaming and yelling a minute before the show started. All day long, the systems were connected. Everything was running. I was perfect. I was calm, cool. I was collected. I was like a pilot in a clean suit, a nice shirt. There was no sweat on the collar. I was ready to fly. I get into the cockpit. Just as I'm taking off, all the systems failed. Can you imagine what I have to do for a living? Now I'm, I'm hitting buttons for callers, and they're not there. Let's try another one. Line 9. David, on line 9, go ahead, please. What's on your mind? Well, I'll tell you what's on my mind. I'm, first off, thank you for uh, having me. I enjoy your show. I listen to it every chance I get. Um, my father and I, we spend a lot of time together, and I'm lucky to have him. He's 85, so uh, we uh, we often speak of what's it going to take. I mean, this is, a, this is a question. What is it going to take for the American public to understand that from a Democratic side of uh, a Democratic point of view, Hillary's no good? I don't understand what the... I don't understand why the party doesn't just jettison her. I mean, there are other Democrats, let's say that I wouldn't vote for any of them, but they're not as, as rotten as this. Uh, what, what, is it, what is it going to take? I don't know. I don't know. Look, we all know that Rupert Murdoch is in the Hillary camp. It's well known in the political world. He's in the, That's why I'm not allowed on the Fox News channel. Ailes hates me. Murdoch hates me. They shouldn't, but they do. It's because I challenge Fox News, so they, are, they don't like my independence. They don't like the fact that I broke free of the Rush Limbaugh cartel and got where I am without them. Fine, that's the way the world works. They're in his in, in, in Hillary's camp, and yet the headline is quid pro dough, and it shows Bill and Hillary rolling in the dough. I think even Murdoch has had enough of her. Well, I, like you said earlier, I don't have a problem that she has money. What I have a problem with is her total disdain for the American people when she gets on TV or does a press conference or whatever it is she's doing, and we can talk about emails. How many of us could get away with that? Let's say we don't have any political cover. We don't, we're not connected. We're just the average... We go to work, and we tell our boss, hey, 
I'm sorry, the uh, 2,000 emails I did last year, 60% of those are personal. How long do you think I'd have my job? Well, the question is this. Now that we know about the dough that was flowing in and her steering contracts and grants or whatever they were doing uh, for influence peddling, you want to put it that way, some are calling it bribery. Don't you assume some of those 30,000 emails would be indictable, would make her indictable? Absolutely. But we're never going to see them because while, while Congress was, uh, you know, the, Wait, the... If NSA is able to pick up the toilet paper we put in our hand and tell us how much toilet paper we used last year, why can't they recover those emails? You're telling me they're not somewhere in, 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 in the cloud, that they're not rec uh, capturable by the NSA? They could, if they wanted to get them, they could get them. The NSA has them. The uh, CIA has them, don't they? Absolutely. The NSA, at, the, at a minimum, has them. Maybe Russia has them. Well, it, it goes beyond that. Without actually tackling one particular point, it comes right back to, and, and I don't want to go back to the caller from Florida or pick on any particular person, but I listened to it, and I, I just shook my head. Here's a guy saying he'd pay more tax, but yet he says he only pays 10% tax. And you were right. Take your money, then, and support people who want right. to come. I pay 39% or so of federal and state tax of over 10% in the, in the corrupt state of Jerry Brown. So I'm being raped by the federal, by the state, by the local governments who are feathering their own nests. And here's a Democrat who pays 10% and says, I should pay more. Well, and he's also telling you, he's trying to tell you and, and convince us that uh, Hillary's going to do right by the country. When has she ever done right by anything? She got well, I don't know how any Democrat with a straight face can support this woman. She, is, she just is not clean enough for the office. There's too much dirt around her for her to run. Of the law, she doesn't have to comply with turning things over to Congress. She doesn't. She doesn't have to sign forms when she leaves the government. I mean, but you know, this is all a distraction. Do you know what the real story is about Hillary Clinton? She killed Gaddafi. Do you remember when she said we came, we saw he died? Do you remember that at all? Absolutely. Do you remember what Gaddafi in Libya said that if you kill me, be very careful, don't kill me because Libya will descend into chaos. It will become a lawless nation like Somalia ruled by warlords. Do you realize that most of the uh, migrants who are fleeing Libya, landing in Europe, 800 of them died last week, they're all a result of Gaddafi being killed by this insane, crazy State Department? Well, it, you know, it is a, it, here's a case where, at that particular point, it was a popular thing for her to do. So she'll fly from, what, I think it was this morning on Fox News, where they commented and said she backpedaled about the two treaties, they're not treaties, they're, they're trade agreements, that uh, the Democrats don't want to get behind because they need her to get big unions behind her for funding purposes. She backpedaled on that. So whatever, whether it's Gaddafi, whether it's, you know, uh, taking, uh, giving political favors for money for flowing into her foundation, it doesn't matter what the topic is. And, and that was my point. At, at some juncture, these Democrats have to say to themselves, when do when are we convinced that this person feels above the law? She doesn't feel that she has to live by the same rules that we do, and it doesn't matter because she can get away with it. She lawyers up. The Secret Service protects her house, so the server sits there. Nobody's going to challenge her. This is who you want for a president: somebody who feels above the law. They don't have to talk to reporters. They can pick and choose who they want to talk. To. Personally, I've had enough of the uh, the debauchery part. Well, but look, let's be what they let's are. Be Let's be clear. You're a Republican. You'd vote for any Republican over any Democrat. That's a given, correct? Absolutely. Uh, but put that aside. You're saying that she is she is too corrupt to hold office. Of all of the Democrat potentials, she's the most corrupt. Isn't that what you're arguing? That's exactly what I'm arguing. So why doesn't the Democrat Party say something to get out from underneath the stink coming out of the Clinton camp is what you're asking. What you're really asking is, what would it take for the Democrat Party to own up to the fact that she's too corrupt for them and they can't back her. That's what you're asking. That's exactly what I'm asking. I don't have an answer for you. I think that there's no answer to that question. I don't think they will ever abandon her. Well, they won't because her polling numbers are high, and then they want to win. So, you know, they'll back a horse, you know, that, that has the numbers, and that's what they're doing. And what we have on the Republican side, Barack Bush, that's who we're supposed to back? Uh, I don't want to back that. I don't. I'm not. I'm not voting for Barack Bush from Florida. Like Bush. Bush. I had 12 years of the Bushes. It's enough already. Yeah. No. Bush is too weak. Mama coddled him too much. I mean, 
you know, I, I'm not going to go down the path of who I particularly like on the on the Republican side. But at this particular point, if we had a Clinton Bush ticket, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, here's my opinion. If we have a Hillary Clinton versus Jeb Bush, the Republicans who did not come out, the conservatives who did not come out for Romney will not come out for him and she wins. Well, that's exactly what And wait a minute, let me finish. He's running interference for Hillary. The reason Bush is running is A, to rake in the, the hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe a billion dollars, to rake in the billion dollars in campaign money. That's number one. And then even if he loses, he wins because he's backed Hillary, and I guarantee you she'll feather, feather their nest. Do you understand he's running interference for her? Because he has no conservative credibility whatsoever, the conservatives will not come out and vote for him. She gets in automatically. It's a repeat of Romney. If they run Bush, it's a repeat of Romney. She wins, and therefore he's running interference for Hillary, in my estimation. Thank you for the call. It's only one man's opinion. I don't know the inside of any of this. All I have is common sense and the ability to analyze. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. We came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> See, now that's the real scandal. That's about Gaddafi, who she is boasting she was responsible for something to do with his di disappearance. And he warned us that if they took him down, as evil as he was, he was a controllable quantity, and he kept the animals under control. And now we have the whole world falling apart because of this Arab Spring business. Meanwhile, the U.S. immigration policy has hit an all-time high, 41.3 million people. Did you hear this? Now, wait, wait till you hear the breakdown of this. The U.S. immigrant population has doubled since 1990, so don't blame that on Obama, while the general population only has gone up 20%. But the immigrant population has quadrupled since 1970, while the general population has risen just over 50%. But here comes Obama. The greatest increases over the last three years in the immigrant population over the last three years now this is since Obama was president, came not from Latin America, but from the Middle East, Muslims, Asia, that's China, and the Caribbean. So he's bringing in as many Muslims as he can, as many Asians as he can, as possible. If you could believe this, that's what he's trying to do, is change the demographics forever. So if you think he's a friend of the Hispanics, you're mistaken. The number of immigrants from Mexico and Europe living in the U.S. has actually gone down slightly since 2010. Did you hear this? But Mexicans still make up the largest immigrant population in the U.S. with 11.6 million legal and illegal immigrants residing. And that's a lie. It's not 11.6 million. It's far higher than that. Far higher than that. One out of every six adults living in the U.S. in 2013 was an immigrant. One out of six. Now, explain something to me. If you're not assimilating these people, if they're not respecting our borders but spitting on them, if they're trampling our flags at colleges... What do you think will happen in 10 or 15 years unless we assimilate immigrants? Tell me what will happen. They'll kick you out of your own country. That's what will happen. Time for one quick call on the Savage Nation program. And again, the phone over here is 855-407-282. Milan on WJR Radio in Detroit. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Hi, Mike and Admire. Um, an earlier caller mentioned the GI Bill and the Great Society. He forgot to mention, like you said, we were solvent and sober then. But it made me think of this. There's a Canadian conservative right fan of Mark Stein, and I don't appreciate him using PR agents like you to push him. You know, when you have someone who mentions the name twice and then spells it out for me, you hear? KBOI Radio. John, welcome to the program. Go ahead, please. Yes. Okay. Um... Well, go ahead. All right, that's it. You lost your, your place in the bakery line. Trisha on WGDG Radio, line four. Go ahead. You're next up on the Savage Nation. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, you mentioned Gaddafi. That's, that was my point. Uh, he didn't disappear. He was on the cover of the New York Post, riddled with bullet holes. That's what she did to Gaddafi. 
So, why, why would she? Why would she kill him? Not why would she kill him when he warned that the country would descend into chaos? I've been wanting to know all this time. What was the reason why America killed Gaddafi when he was doing nothing? What did he do? Nothing. Uh, what uh, Reagan had straightened him out. As far as you know, yes, Reagan launched off the. I think it was off the Eisenhower Gulf of Tripoli, two U.S. F-15s. They put missiles down his uh, t right into his tent and killed his son. And then Gaddafi stopped acting acting up after that. I remember distinctly. He, was, he became a very controllable um, uh, puppet at that point. I don't know why they knocked him off. I have no idea why would they do that. Apparently, well, it must have been they wanted to put their people in there. Throw over or maybe Israel's next. Maybe they'll go after Netanyahu and assassinate him. Don't after all, if you, if you want to make an omelet, you got to break a few eggs, and Netanyahu was the last egg that hasn't been broken in the Middle East. Mike, they're never going to get Netanyahu, and they're never going to get, you know, Israel. Forget about that. Don't be so sure of what they're never going to get. If they're willing to waste the nation, what do they care about a single man? Faith in God Almighty. And yeah, of course, pray to God Almighty. Keep praying. That's all we have left is God. We don't have anyone in politics to pray to. A bunch of rotten villains, every last one of them. They're all villainous. There's no better word for it. The American political system is villainous. At this point, the only one I can back is Scott Walker. And I don't know much about him. I will not back Rubio. He's a non-entity. never should have run. He's a clown. Ted Cruz is unelectable. He looks like a weasel. And he sounds like a weasel. I don't care how much you love him. So who's left? Scott Walker, that's all. Hillary, if the Democrat Party had any brains, they would, they would encourage you not to run. It's the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. What kind of donations to the foundation or your husband? Well, we're back into the political season, and therefore we will be subjected to all kinds of distraction and attacks. Uh, and uh, I'm ready for that. I know that that comes, unfortunately, with the territory. It is, um, I think, worth noting that uh, the Republicans seem to be uh, talking only about me. I don't know what they'd talk about if I weren't in the race. Uh, but I am in the race, and uh, hopefully we'll get onto the issues, and I look forward to that. Well, that's the number one issue. How much money did you rake in? What, what are you talking about? You'll get back to it. What are we Republicans are talking about? You, you stink to high heaven. The country is talking about how rotten your family is. The best headline of the day is on the front of the New York Post, and they're pro-Hillary. That's the funny part. We know that Murdoch can't get enough of the Clintons, and yet Murdoch's rag, the New York Post, has an anti-Hillary headline, quid pro do. Bill cashed in when Hill was in O's cabinet. Big bucks from foreign interests. Bill Clinton raked in $48 million for speeches while Hillary was Secretary of State. While she used her clout in, 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 to help foreign donors, donors to the Family Foundation, a new book says. Bill Clinton's earnings from paid speeches in 01, 9.4 million. By 2009, it was 7.5 million. Went down. 2010, when his wife was Secretary of State, 10 million. 2011, 13 million. 2012, 17 million. Hillbillies, megabucks, it says. Hillary Rotten Clinton used her clout as Secretary of Hate to do favors for foreign donors who gave millions to her family foundation and who paid millions more to her husband, Bill, in speaking fees and new book charges. This is the book by Peter Schweitzer. says that Bill Clinton raked in nearly half of the $105 million he was paid for speeches over a 12-year period during the four years that his corrupt wife, Hillary Clinton, served as Secretary of State. So now, where you think the missing emails have something to do with this? The book is called Clinton Cash. And they raise questions about shady foreign money flowing into the Clinton Foundation and what actions Hillary took in her official capacity in exchange for the cash. It's an amazing allegation. Schweitzer is a former speechwriter consultant for for George Bush to be clear about this but let me tell you something I don't care if he was God himself he could be sued for libel if he couldn't support his allegations God would be sued for libel if he wrote a book like this and couldn't support his allegations one example of the alleged quid pro quo cited by the New York Times and other sources involved the State Department backing a free trade agreement with Colombia 
that benefited a company founded by a big donor to the Clinton Foundation. Okay? There's more. Much more to it than this. This family is tied to foreign donors. Of the 13 Clinton speeches that fetched $500,000 or more, only two occurred during the years his wife was not Secretary of State. Ladies and gentlemen, don't you think we deserve better than a system that, that, that would permit the American flag to be bought and sold like a cheap rag? I think it does. Even ABC News asked her about it. And she gave the old, aw, oh, shucks, they're picking on a poor little woman again. Just picking on a poor little woman again. But that leaves us with a question. Would you vote for a rhino like Barack Bush to stop Hillary? I won't. I will never vote for a Bush. Eight years was enough. The first father was good. The second one was a dunce. The second one was El Dunso. The first one I, I had respect for. The second one didn't know where he was. He was like here and there. I didn't know what state he was in half the time. Never mind the state of mind. Only conservative talk shows who were invited to the, to the White House liked him. No, I wouldn't vote for another Bush. We had eight years of them. We know what to expect. Let's see, where would the war be this time? Let's see, they gave us one in Iraq. Mm, they gave us one in Afghanistan. What country has not yet been bombed by a Bush? So if Jeb Bush became president, eh, I would say they could go after taking uh, taking it out on Bangla, uh, Pakistan or Bangladesh. They might bomb Bangladesh and send troops to Bangladesh and tell us it's in our national interest to keep uh, the Bangladeshis out of New York City. That, uh, you know, there's another 9-11. It's sickening. Just sickening. So you say, well, who are you going to vote for? It's simple. I mean, I, I'm not going to mince words. I would go for uh, Walker. I like Scott Walker. I think he's the only one who is relatively clean and could win. Not only because he's clean, he's also a good organizer. He's believable. So he has a little charisma problem. So what? I need a con man who's very charismatic like Obama? I don't need charisma. I need a little honesty. So as far as I am concerned, I'm a, uh, at this point, I would go for Scott Walker. We haven't heard much by him or for him yet, but I would back him. I won't back the others, by the way. I will not back Rubio or fraud. He should withdraw now while the going is good. It's as corrupt as it gets. We're no better than the, the most rotten banana republic. And what do we have on the other side of the aisle? There's your answer. Let's see. We have Barack Bush. We have Barack Hussein Bush ready to rake in the dough. We have the construct, Rubio, invented by a group of billionaire donors in Florida, a creation, a total creation. Rubio is as about ready to be the president as my dog is. He has about as much qualification to be president as Teddy is to be president. He sounds like a juvenile that they picked off the street. And I'm supposed to sit here and chant? Rubio, 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 they found some clown with O at the end of his name, and suddenly he's a president? This is the country we have. We got what we deserve because you were asleep. Not me. Don't blame me. I'm not asleep. You are. Are you willing to vote in a rhino like Barack Bush for president to stop Hillary? Another Bush? So here's Barack Obama, the most corrupt, vicious liar in the history of the American presidency, now pushing the big lie of global warming to rob us even further. Listen to this fraud in clip one. Wednesday is Earth Day, a day to appreciate and protect this precious planet we call home. And oh, today please. there's no greater then threat. stop flying planet. around in Air Force One! 2014 was the planet's warmest year on record. 14 well, you and your wife used the plane so much. on record have all fallen in the first 15 years of this century. Let me explain something about Earth Day, which I'll talk a lot more about tomorrow. I know an awful lot about it. It was created by a man in prison right now for murdering his girlfriend, Holly Maddox. Earth Day was a creation of one of the greatest con men of his period, Ira Einhorn. He killed his girlfriend, Holly Maddox. He stuffed her in a trunk, hid her in his closet, and fled to Europe where he was protected by American liberals for nearly 15 years, I believe. And it was owing to one fabulous district attorney in Philadelphia who would not give up on bringing this guy Ira Einhorn back to justice that he was finally brought back from France tried and found guilty of murder that's who created Earth Day he has about as much validity as Al Sharpton does in reorganizing in the American police force so that's the con man in the White House a day to appreciate and protect this precious planet then he flies off on Air Force One to go c collect money bags of money 
It's unbelievable to me. How do you people put up with it? Any other country, this wouldn't be going on. 20 things I trust more than Barack Obama. One, Mexican tap water. Are you listening? Someone sent this to me. 20 things I trust more than Barack Obama. One, Mexican tap water. Two, a porcupine with a pet me sign. Bill Clinton with my teenage daughter. Passing gas while fighting the flu. An elevator ride with Ray Rice. Taking pills or a drink offered by Bill Cosby. A Hillary Clinton war story reported by Brian Williams. Gas station sushi. This is 20 things I trust more than Barack Obama. Gas station sushi. Jimmy Carter with the economy. A Palestinian on a motorcycle. Pete Carroll coaching decisions. Eating an apple from an orchard at Fukushima reactor number four. Hitching a ride from a guy in a goalie, goalie mask. The ingredients in a hot dog. Nancy Pelosi's grip on reality. Jerry Sandusky as a, as a Boy Scout. <laughs> Oh, God. Did you know that Bill Clinton is believed to be the richest living ex-president and one of the ten wealthiest ever? You say, well, that's not a crime. No, not really a crime. But when you're using your wife's office to enrich your family, that is something different, is it not? How was that done? According to the book, there were lucrative development contracts awarded to foundation donors following the devastating Haitian earthquake in 2010. Now, you know that Barack Obama and Ram Emanuel said never let a crisis go to waste. But it's not limited to them. Well, there was the Haitian earthquake. Boy, was was money made off that one. How much money do you think was made off Katrina? How much money was made off the Iraq war? How much money is being made off the I Afghanistan war? How much money is being made off the ginned up war with Russia over It's all about money. There's such corruption. And yes, it doesn't make sense. How much money do you think is being made on the illegal aliens coming across the border? Tens of billions of dollars a month are being made by front groups for churches and private organizations that are receiving billions of dollars in federal money. Billions of dollars is being raked off on the illegal alien. This report says that Hillary's brother, Tony Rotten, sat on the board of a small North Carolina mining company that in 2012 got one of only two coveted gold exploitation permits from the government of Haiti, the first issued in more than 50 years, according to the website Breitbart. Bill Clinton himself was paid a million dollars by a Canadian bank and a major shareholder in the Keystone XL pipeline as the State Department was considering the project, according to the author Schweitzer. I don't know what else to say to you other than we have the government we deserve. There's nothing else I can say to you. I think that that says it all. She is disqualified now. She should withdraw. But the woman has no shame. She won't withdraw. But she is vulnerable to another Democrat, by the way. And that, in a way, is a little worrisome because they may be worse than her. I mean, you could say, well, she's corrupt, but she's, let's say, a, a known corrupt entity. Who would you rather have if it was her or Elizabeth Focahontas, Warren? Would you rather have Hillary or Focahontas, the, the left-wing fanatic? They're both left-wing fanatics. Which one is more fanatical is the question. And which one is more corrupt? That's the only question. Well, on the right side, who do we have? We discount Rubio, a non-entity, not qualified at any speed. We have people with good ideas like Rand Paul and uh, whatever his name is, Cruz, but they're not electable. And then we have Scott Walker, who has good ideas and is electable. That's why I back Walker at this time. I don't know what you think about it, but I find it a little boring to talk about 2016. But it's hitting us right in the face. It's hitting us right in the face. We have to talk about these things, don't we? Right? And I'll be right back. It's the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. will work with anybody. I've done that. I did it as senator. I will do it again. But I will also stand my ground when we need to. And part of that is getting unaccountable money out of politics because we cannot afford that, even if it takes a constitutional amendment. New York Post, quid pro do. Bill cashed in when Hill was in the O's cabinet. Big bucks came from foreign interests. It's a huge book. It's going to be a bestseller. Big mega bucks tied to foreign donors, says the book.
God himself couldn't have made these allegations if they weren't backed up with the facts without getting sued into the poorhouse. Now, there's another story. Here's the other story. You got U.S. warships. Apparently, they're running next to uh, Iranian warships. Allegedly, the Iranian warships are bringing weapons to the Houthis in Yemen, right? Well, which side are we on? I thought Iran as our ally against ISIS in Iraq, but what, they're our enemy in Yemen? They're our, they're our ally in Iraq, but they're our enemy in Yemen? Who is in charge of this country? Which clown is in charge of the Joint Chiefs of Staff? Which clown is in charge of the government? One hand doesn't know what the other hand is doing. So let's see, let's follow this again. There's a show of force of our Navy trailing or blocking the Iranian Navy, which is a bunch of rust buckets, by the way, leftover garbage that some other third world hellholes sold them, some Navy. They could sink the entire Navy by pressing one button. One carrier could press one button and there'd be no Iranian Navy. It would disappear. But there's a big show of force. I say, Here's the U.S. Navy is here and the Iranian rust buckets are there. And we're being told that the great Obama, the uh, admiral in chief, is protecting us in Yemen from preventing the Iranian Navy from bringing weapons to the Houthi rebels. Okay. Then why is Iran our ally in Iraq against ISIS? Can anyone explain that to me? If you can, you win a Nobel Prize, because no one else can explain it. Here's another little story. Arab TV commentators claim Obama supports Iran because his father was a Shiite. Did you hear this one? Commentators on two different Arabic television programs claim that President Bar Barack Obama is pushing a nuclear deal with Iran because his father, Barack Obama Sr., was a Shiite Muslim, and President Obama apparently wants the Shia-run government of Iran to be victorious in the region. Commentators made their remarks on the UK channel Al Hiwa TV on March 25 and on Four Shabab TV in Saudi Arabia on April 10. Syrian writer Mutin Lazik Elnani and Hiwa said, There is one thing we must not forget. I am not peddling some theory and I am not being racist, but Barack Hussein Obama is the son of a Shiite Kenyan father. He spent much of his childhood in Mombasa, South Kenya, said Lazikani. I visited this very area and I can tell you that it is mostly Shiite. All the childhood memories of the man who rules the White House are Shiite memories. This is why the Iranian issue is so important to him and why he is so anxious for Iran to emerge victorious and for Syria and all the countries of the Arab Gulf to be shattered, sell, said the Arab commentator Lazi Khani. Did you know that President Obama's father was born in Ngoma Kogelo, which is the southwest region of Kenya? But his own father, what do you mean his father? He had two fathers. I guess that's why Hillary wrote the book, uh, Johnny Has Two Fathers. His own father had converted from Christianity to Islam and whatever. Who knows? It's too complicated. But the, what the article is missing is that Obama's biological father was really not around during his formative years. Remember, they divorced in 1964 when our president was around three years old. So why would you assume that the father would have great influence on the son when he wasn't even around? The kid was three years old. He hadn't even lived with his father since he was a month old. So I'm not so sure that this is a correct picture of what influences our president in his dealings with Iran. What do I think? What are his decisions on Iran based on? Valerie Jarrett and her Iranian connections. That is the real story. And that's what's missing from this headline. And now you've heard the rest of the story. I want to shift, though, to something entirely different. A plane bound for Amman, Jordan, goes down in the Caspian Sea. The crash yields no survivors, except the hijacker. And a cask containing an agent of unprecedented destructive potential is missing from the plane wreckage. A carefully plotted terrorist attack has been put into motion, and the resulting chaos might be enough to push America toward another costly war. Countdown to Mecca, it's a gripping page-turner. Savage.